This man has just suffered a serious stroke. His best chance for a full recovery is to receive proper medical treatment within 90 minutes. A 911 call alerts a dispatcher. The dispatcher alerts the local emergency medical technicians. The EMT determines it is likely a stroke. The call is made to the hospital. The doctor notifies the team that the patient is inbound. When the patient arrives, he receives rapid, stroke-specific care. We just witnessed an efficient and very impressive response system that resulted in a good outcome for the patient. Today, we're gonna to look at a similar emergency response system, one that has assisted in my own life, and in your life too, many times over. A cut in a person's skin allows blood to flow freely. But with a cut this size, in a short time, the bleeding stops on its own. How does it do that? The answer is not that the blood just dries up and plugs the hole. It stopped because of a sophisticated emergency response system operating under her skin. It's called the blood clotting cascade, and it's one of the true wonders of human physiology. Here's an overview of how it works. Here's the cut from the thorn. As the red blood cells flow out, there's nothing to stop them. This does not look good for our gardener. But watch this. These are chemical signals. It's a 911 call. And here come our body's first responders. They're called platelets. They might not look impressive, but they're actually mighty morphing heroes. As they land, these remarkable transformers stretch out and begin to form a plug. They also release more chemical messengers to summon reinforcements. More platelets arrive, and eventually the outflow is slowed. Whew, it's a good start, but this barrier isn't strong enough to hold for long. We actually need a different team of transformers to save the day. The system activates another series of chemical signals. To the rescue comes an absolute marvel of molecular biology, fibrinogen. These guys do serious work, and their powers need to be used judiciously. So, at the correct time, thrombin shows up to activate it. The fibrinogen molecules then transform into fibrin. Now, watch as the fibrin link end-to-end -to, -end to make strands, and they form a super-secure mesh. This process is called coagulation. Thanks to the quick work of our elegant response team, the gardener won't bleed out, and the disaster is averted. That is, unless coagulation continues and the expanding clot blocks her blood vessel. Not to worry, other heroes join the fray. Two of the strongest are antithrombin and thrombomodulin. They switch off thrombin, and the fibrinogen is not activated to become fibrin. Later, the cleanup crew arrives. A critical component is plasminogen. When activated, it becomes plasmin. Plasmin is an eating machine. It dissolves fibrin once its work is done. Finally, her body heals the wound and the clot dissolves away. So think about that next time you cut yourself shaving. It's really a beautiful, finely tuned system. Now, the blood clotting cascade has been the subject of rigorous scientific research for many decades. In the next several segments, I'm going to cover two topics that are central to a profound question. How might the amazing cascade have evolved? Battle has it look, looks good.
good here. Flight good agreement. Okay, boost to Hattie Lux. That's what she looks good, Flight. Okay, Capcom, we go beyond the ground. In 1970, the plight of Apollo 13 riveted the world. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. A small defect in an oxygen tank led to a system failure, and the mission almost ended in complete disaster. We've been admiring the blood clotting cascade, but just as with a spacecraft, defects can occur in the system, and the results can be life-threatening. We know that the success of the Cascade depends on each component doing its job. Earlier, we saw fibrinogen, but there are actually 11 more proteins that play an essential role in the process. I won't quiz you on their odd names, but in all, there are 12 proteins that contribute to clotting. We also have the anti-clotting proteins. We saw a fibrin. There are 10 more on this side and more sciency names. It's a delicate balance, and a defect on either side can result in a system failure. Here's two examples. Some people are born with hemophilia. This disease is caused by a mutation in factor VIII. It leads to insufficient blood clotting and can result in dangerously excessive bleeding. Factor V Leiden thrombophilia is another genetic disease. It's caused by a mutation in factor V. In this case, the protein isn't switched off at the proper times. The result is abnormal and harmful blood clots. Now, let's look at how these defects occur. DNA is the control center of the cell. It contains the genetic information that determines the size and shape of proteins that assemble together to form you and me. A mutation is a change in DNA, which leads to a change in the structure of a protein. Here are three possible effects of mutation. Harmful mutations lead to mild or severe health problems. Neutral mutations basically have no effect on health, and a person might not even know they have one. How about helpful mutations? Well, that's question number one on our topic of how the blood clotting cascade might have evolved. Are there beneficial mutations that drive evolution? Darwin's theory of evolution claims that life forms advance through small, random, helpful changes over time. Neutral mutations don't cause significant changes. Harmful mutations are damaging, not constructive. For life to evolve, we would need beneficial mutations. Sticking with today's subject, can we find any beneficial mutations occurring in blood? Well, that's easy. I can tell you in no uncertain terms that the answer is yes. And no. Adults and children in many regions of the world suffer from malaria. A fraction of people in these regions have a condition called sickle cell trait, which is caused by a mutation that leads their bodies to produce slightly altered hemoglobin. In turn, that can cause their red blood cells to take the shape of a sickle. It also makes them resistant to the malaria parasites, which gives them a degree of natural immunity to malaria. The sickle cell mutation is often pointed to as a clear example of evolution. And so it is, after a fashion. A mutation made a change in the blood cells that helped people adapt to an environment with a terrible endemic disease. Those without the mutation remain vulnerable to malaria. Those points are true, but there's more to the story. In its strongest form, sickle cell also results in anemia, severe swelling, and infections. While it does help with malaria, the bottom line is that sickle cell itself can be very harmful. Sickle cell is just one example of mutations that are ultimately harmful. In fact, the overwhelming majority of non-neutral genetic mutations are damaging, not helpful. So, to answer our question, no, 
there is no evidence that beneficial mutation results in constructive changes for advancing evolution. But we've been dwelling on changes in DNA and proteins. Now let's turn our focus back to the coordinated parts of the whole cascade and further examine the blood clotting system. What is a system? A system is individual components that are interconnected to perform a task. As we see here, a well-constructed sequence reaches the target. But a critical path that has a flaw will fail. We'll be coming back for more fun with these systems later. We saw earlier that the blood clotting cascade is a highly complex system indeed. The many proteins are interconnected and interdependent. Each one makes an essential contribution to the system's success. So here's our second question. Could such a complex, carefully calibrated system have developed through Darwinian evolution? According to Darwin, those small incremental steps that supposedly advanced life over time occurred randomly. Here's an example of that approach. All right, next one, looking for number B5. B5, anybody got B5? Suppose we change the rules of our game. Instead of adding pieces intentionally, our players have to build their systems randomly. First one to the target wins. N24. Come on, folks. Who's got a system? Before long, our players are ready to find a new game. I-19. While relying on chance can be fun for some games, it's no way to build a functioning system. That shouldn't be hard to see. Bingo? In the 1990s, I wrote a book titled Darwin's Black Box. In the book, I argued that the blood clotting cascade could not have developed through unguided evolution because the system is irreducibly complex. In other words, all the parts are necessary. Even one missing component will result in a system failure. Instead, the blood clotting cascade had to have been purposely designed to be functional. And here's an enormously important point. In the book, I also noted that no science publication had ever shown how the blood clotting system could have been produced through random mutation and natural selection. Little did I know that what I wrote would lead to one of the biggest jolts in my career in biochemistry. A distinguished scientist and leading expert on the subject of blood clotting named Russell Doolittle challenged my position. He pointed to a paper about clever experiments with mice where parts of their blood clotting cascade were removed and the mice had no ill effects. From that, Doolittle concluded that not all the parts are needed, so the system is not irreducibly complex. His published report was a huge blow to my claims, especially coming from a scientist of Doolittle's stature. So it appeared that the course of my argument could be headed for a major correction. Mouse blood can clot without the full cascade system intact. Or can it? There's no doubt the findings in the paper were the result of valuable, well-executed research. But it turned out Professor Doolittle had misread the paper, which to be honest, isn't hard to do. Technical papers can be unclear and difficult to decipher. Although removing parts from the mice's clotting cascade did have some interesting results, in the end, it made them quite sick, with many of them hemorrhaging and dying. The lesson from this incident is not that scientific papers can be hard to read. Rather, the overwhelmingly important lesson is that not even the best scientists in the world know how Darwinian processes, that is, unguided changes over time, could have built complex biological systems. Of course, blood clotting is just one of many elaborate systems. 
all of which rely on interdependent components. And it's irrefutable that even the most advanced of all our human engineered systems comes nowhere close to the intricacy of what is operating right now within you. The complex biological systems within each of us were not assembled by happenstance. They work with dazzling precision because each one has been purposefully designed. <laughs>